welcome to Bob Reeves Brass. It's great to have you with us in our workshop today. I'm John Snell. And I'm Brett Kendall. Hey, Brett, you're looking good today. Oh, thanks. You too, buddy. Thank you. Let's, let's talk about airflow or lack of airflow. Now, a lot of players, a lot of teachers, even a lot of equipment manufacturers think about airflow in the instrument. And that can lead you down the wrong road. In fact, one of the most common phone calls and emails we get here at the shop is, I feel like I can't get enough air through the instrument. Things feel tight and constricted, like I'm, I can't blow through. And we're gonna demonstrate today that that's not airflow that you're feeling, it's actually acoustic resistance. It's actually that standing wave that gets set up in the instrument that you're then perceiving back at your lips. Brett, you wanna explain what we came up with to demonstrate this? Sure. So. What we made is basically a mouthpiece that's in two pieces, different than a screw rim, but it, they slip together. And what that allows us to do is to put a membrane across the cup after the rim in the middle of the cup, basically. And by doing that, the membrane will vibrate. You can still play the trumpet, but no airflow is gonna go through the mouthpiece and is gonna go out this side, which we have a hole through the side of the cup going this way. And we should give credit to Richard Smith of Smith Watkins over in the UK. Uh, he came up with this concept uh, maybe a few decades ago, and he has a great YouTube video that demonstrates this as well, except it's with a uh, trombone mouthpiece that he designed a similar kind of concept based on the no airflow going through the instrument. So we have our final product, and this is also one of the prototypes we made. Originally, we just had a hole and it was really hard to play. I mean, basically it felt like you were just buzzing, like you're buzzing your lips. You weren't getting any feedback from the instrument. And so we added a tube, which is similar to what Richard Smith uh, has in his video. And it played better. And kind of as a, as a joke at first, I made this bell, which I turned it by hand and I you know, made it a tight fit. And I was kind of tuning it back and forth to see if there was a difference in the way it was responding. And obviously there was, but then I kind of put a light in my head and I realized, so. You know, what we're missing in this equation is the rest of the mouthpiece. You know, we're missing the backbore of the mouthpiece. So then I took a mouthpiece or I took an under part of ours, cut it off and soldered it onto here. So basically what you're getting is you have a full mouthpiece here and relatively a full mouthpiece here. We have a regular backbore coming out of here that then makes them both sympathetic to each other. So when you're playing, you get the feel of this backbore because of the acoustics, but the sound is going through this backbore through the trumpet to tr you know, truly make a sound. Mm -hmm. Then we can play the full range of the instrument. So you're putting the membrane over, mm -hmm. sealing up the cup so that no airflow will go through. Right. Put the rim on. And out. So now if I plug this in, the air exit hole, no air going through whatsoever. So as I get lower below the staff, it starts to get funky. And that's because the lower frequencies aren't quite set up. Uh, in this short of length uh, of the exit hole. So that means I have to do a little bit more manipulation here, almost more like buzzing. But as I get higher, to me as the player, it feels like I'm playing a trumpet. And that's because I'm feeling those frequencies, I'm feeling that standing wave coming out of here. And that means I am able to time the pitches with my embouchure and air and whatnot. Um, so it feels like I'm playing a trumpet. Okay, so another cool little trick we can do with this that demonstrates the energy uh, that we're putting through the instrument. Again, we're not putting any airflow through. We can, if you were here with us, you could physically feel it with your hands. Since you're not, we'll do a visual demonstration for you. I'm gonna take the tuning slide out and Brett has lit your standard uh, candle. Any tricks with this candle? Anything uh, no, magic about it? Just... Regular candle, it's not one of those, you know, like. Regular candle. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put energy into the lead pipe and set up a standing wave, and that should be concentrated enough here at the end of the lead pipe to blow out a candle without an ear. Is 
there you have it. So there is air exiting, again, the exit hole of the mouthpiece pointing this way, but just the, the excitement of the air molecules in here that are excited by that standing wave have enough force to blow out your average candle. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. So as I was describing earlier, because of the length of the mouthpiece, it only responds well in the upper register, maybe around C or G in the staff. So right around there, I have to start manipulating more to keep the, the center of the note, and then lower it gets worse. So now we're gonna add four feet of tubing. So I wonder if I get a double with this from the union. I think so. Right? Yeah, I have to talk to my rep. Wait. Okay, so now we have this trumpet with no airflow going through. This trumpet now is the exit hole. So this is where the air is going through. So now I can play down the low C and it responds pretty much like a low C would on a normal trumpet. One trumpet sounding with air going through it, one trumpet sounding without any air going through it. So what does all this craziness mean? Well, it means that at least in terms of thinking about your equipment, thinking about the mouthpiece, thinking about the horn, you don't need airflow. It's not the airflow through the instrument that you're feeling, it's the acoustics. Yeah, I mean, that goes to everything we do here. I mean, Bob for 50 years was, you know, studying acoustics and studying with Bill Cardwell, you know, learning about how the trumpet works, how the mouthpiece works, what things they each control. Because as you can see, you know, obviously the trumpet controls some things, the mouthpiece controls others. Um, but that goes with the valve alignment, that goes with how we make our mouthpieces, that goes with, um, the gap, you know, I mean all these things are the acoustics of the instrument. It's not airflow because airflow isn't It gets you excited to play, you know, the lips excited to make the sound but past that you're feeling the actual Acoustics of the vibrating air in the instrument So I hope you learned a little bit today about acoustics and how your instrument works And of course if you want a consultation or want to learn more We're more than happy to consult with you on your equipment setup. You can reach us at BobReeves.com of course, we're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and you can email us at the shop. We'll be happy to consult with you. Yeah, thanks, Brett. Thanks for watching. Yeah, bye-bye.